I'm Paula Santana. I'm co-founder and COO of Maternet. Um, and I'm very excited to be here to share with you our vision and what we do and our work uh, for the last four years. Uh, what um, inspired Maternet, uh, uh, us to start Maternet, was basically the understanding that one billion people in the world today have no access to all season roads. Um, these people is completely disconnected from all social and economic activity, so they cannot get um, their goods to market uh, to create a sustainable path out of poverty, and they cannot get access to basic health services, basic goods, neither, because they're just completely disconnected. So imagine that, for example, in Papua New Guinea, most of the goods in rural areas are stuck for several hours. Um, and that means products, that means um, medicine, and that means people as well. But um, when we start talking about this, many people think the idea and the aim to take modernet is just something for the developing world. And I like to remind people that we have the same problem in the other side of the spectrum. So most of us live in congested cities and mega cities, over four billion people. And it seems like we haven't figured out a way to scale infrastructure in a manner that is sustainable, that is scalable, and that actually matches this 21st century. So uh, especially because the first and the last mile um, that is uh, you know, a problem that we still haven't been able to solve, um, they consist the most expensive and least efficient part of the transportation chain. And 70% of, uh, and the cost of what we move, 70% of that goes into the last mile. And we still haven't been able to figure that out. So um, we had a question four years ago, and the question was, can we leapfrog? Can we leapfrog road infrastructure with the technology that is available today? And we think we can with a new paradigm of transportation. It basically consists on three main components. Um, it's about small flying vehicles or UAVs or drones, however you want to call them. It's also about cloud software and a mobile app that together integrated can uh, form an ultra flexible logistic and distribution network for the distribution of goods that works in the background like the internet 24 seven, like an internet for physical goods for matter. And we call that Matternet. Let me tell you a little bit more how it works. Um, for you, what you see is basically an app. You tap, tap, and you have created a route linking your nearest clinic or your nearest pharmacy to you. You tap again, and a vehicle takes off and brings you whatever medicine you've ordered from your pharmacy, and then you receive a notification that your medicine is there, and you just go and grab it. But for us, it's building the technology that goes behind. So we create something that is very reliable uh, and a system that can really live up to the hype of creating a new paradigm of transportation. This is Modernet One. We announced this product 29 days ago. It's the first smart drone for transportation. It is completely autonomous, it is electric, and it can carry one kilogram over 20 kilometers. Um, this red box that you see there, um, is basically the heart of Maternet. Um, and you can put there uh, something that has less than one kilogram and around 2.5 liters. We um, believe that by uh, having focus on the design and making it very appealing and very user-centric, uh, you don't need to be a hobbyist, you don't need to have any skills to operate this system, and it's an end-to-end -end solution, vertically integrated, so anybody can use this uh, drone. The way the whole system works it, is that the drone uh, takes off and lands in landing pads, or what we call landing stations. There are, these are flat structures in the ground where the drone uses precision landing accuracy, so you know it's gonna be landing always in the same, in the same place. Or wherever you see one of these landing pads, you know that a drone can be taking off or landing. So you can call it a parking lot for drones. And the brain of Modernet is our cloud software. Basically, every time you create a request through the app, you're indicating the drone that is going to fly from a point A to a point B. This information goes to our cloud, and basically the cloud creates the best, safest, and most direct route from point A to point B that takes into account 
weather, sensitive areas that we don't want to fly over, like a school or a national park, and at the same time guarantees that we're not going to fly over fly zones or go into an airport and so forth. And um, this is um, like an image of uh, the calculations that our route planner does. So you see that from moving from one place to another, we would avoid the red areas that are known fly zones. And basically, we try to keep our system within the safety parameters. What makes MaterNet um, relevant to um, today is that four years ago, we had a couple of breakthroughs. So people were using drones as, you know, uh, to put a camera there, to do some aerial mapping, uh, to use it in agriculture. But as a vehicle, we thought that the killer application of any vehicle is to move stuff. And you can either move people or you can move goods. And we thought that possibly we are in front of the biggest invention since the internal combustion engine. Why? Because for the first time, we have a vehicle that is very small in the small UAV category. So we're talking about something that is 10% hardware and 90% software. We think this is going to be a game changer for the whole automation industry and for the whole transportation industry as well. Also, the energy cost plays uh, an amazing uh, fact here. So if you think about the most lightweight vehicle, motorized vehicle today, let's say a motorcycle, you need that motorcycle to be driven by someone. So you have, let's say, 250 pounds carrying probably two pounds. When you have that big mass, moving that mass from one point to the other, it costs a lot of energy. But when you have a small mass, a small vehicle like ours that is uh, four kilograms, uh, less than one square meter, or about one square meter, carrying one or two kilograms, then the total mass is very small, and the energy cost that you need to move that mass is also very small. For example, we are um, anticipating that once uh, our system mature, we will be able to move things from one point to another over 20 kilometers for only 24 cents of dollar. And from those 24 cents of dollar, only four cents are energy. And we think this is a dramatical change from uh, the way we, we have conceived transportation until today. Um, of course, there are some challenges, and I'm not going to talk more about them because you will have Jim Williams addressing the whole uh, regulatory approach and you know, efforts from the FAA. But we understand that there are two main problems um, that need to be resolved, and technology plays a big role there, right? Because if you don't have good technology that is reliable, then you cannot ask from civil aviation authorities to trust that technology, especially because safety translates into public perception. So we think that uh, another problem that drones have is that because they've been, at least from the US, um, the, the US vision of the world, um, drones, uh, when we think about drones, we think about, you know, Afghanistan and Middle East and drones crashing over people and killing people, right? But, and, and, and some people always tell me, why don't you change the word drone? Why don't you talk to them, talk about them about flying vehicles and things like that? But I think that what we need to solve is not the word drone, but what we do with these drones. So then you can say, well, yeah, it's a drone, but, you know, this is doing amazing things in the world. So when you um, take the same technology that happens to be a neutral technology and you put it in the hands of institutions, organizations, companies that really create an impact in the world with this technology, then you can make the technology not uh, life-taking but life-giving. You, know, you can bring it to, to do the best it can do in the world. Um, this is why we have a lot of challenges, but we, we get inspired by the work we do in the world today. So, for example, this was in Bhutan last year. Uh, we were invited by the World Health Organization and the Prime Minister of Bhutan to help them complement a big telemedicine project that they have in the country. The country is in the Himalayas, very mountainous. They don't have enough infrastructure, but they're connected through these telemedicine projects. So you can go to any rural clinic and um, a patient can talk to a doctor that is in a main hospital. But the chain, the whole cycle is not complete because yes, you can know what you have, you know you have this illness, but how do you receive your medicine? 
that part is still broken. So this is where an internet of matter comes in. So we went there and we did some tests connecting some clinics that were in the rural side of the country to a national hospital. Um, this is one of the flights. Uh, it's been sped up, but we uh, had the opportunity to fly uh, over one of the biggest Buddhas in the world. We thought that was good luck, you know, taking such a, a crazy and challenging uh, thing to solve. So we thought that was meaningful. Um, and now we, this year we're going on with stage two of that project. And it's basically not only testing and, and knowing that this is feasible to do, but actually doing it. So probably Bhutan will be one of the first countries to have their whole health public system connected, not only virtually, but also materially with Modernet. Um, the way we're going to do this is that around 800, um, 180 clinics are uh, around 30 hospitals, and we think we can connect at least 60 of them in the first stage of Modernet with the product that we already have that is Modernet 1. Another example is uh, Papua New Guinea. We went there last year with Doctors Without Borders. The country has a big tuberculosis epidemic. The government has requested technical and operational help from the international community because it's getting out of their hands. And this is the reality in Papua New Guinea. Papua New Guinea is, together with Bhutan, one of the top five most rural countries in the world. In Papua New Guinea, 82% of people live in the highlands. So what can we do when you spend most of your day stuck in mud or trying to get your vehicle out of mud? Um, and basically, you know, we said, let's go there. Let's use our system to overpass jungles, to overpass all this infrastructure that just doesn't make any sense that it exists in a 21st century. And let's help Doctors Without Borders. So we were able to um, take sputum samples where the, the, the TV, um, the saliva of people should be analyzed, take it from one place where it was collected to the lab where it's being analyzed in four hours. It gets analyzed. And suddenly, you know, you have an organization that is doing amazing work already and that gets exponentially more powerful just because you have empowered them with a tool that can make their work totally, you know, seamless, if you want to call it like that. So what is uh, happening with Maternet in 2015? We um, feel very confident about the technology that we have developed in the last four years. And we thought it was time to keep pushing boundaries. So we announced Modernet 1. And in only 29 days, we have received over 250 requests to use Modernet 1 all around the world for different applications, ranging from internal logistics um, to pharma delivery, diagnostics delivery, and so forth. And we. Um, last week just announced our first partnership, some of the first companies that will be using Modernet One this year that are Swiss Post, Swiss World Cargo, and us together in Switzerland. And this is a proof that this technology is not only for the developing world. Switzerland is one of the most advanced countries in the world in terms of regulation, in terms of infrastructure, and in terms of technology. And they understand that there is the possibility to do something that is more forward-looking. Like, let's push the boundaries. We still have rural areas. They are well connected. But if we have a system that can prove to be more effective, why not try it out? So we have gone through the whole certification process with the Federal Civil Aviation Authority of Switzerland. And our system is getting certified. So it's not uh, impossible to get small UAVs to be at the level that they need to be in terms of reliability and in terms of performance. It is possible, but you, you, know, you just need to work. You just need to make your system work um, in, in an integral way. So uh, from diagnostics to post to an apple, something that resonates with people here in the valley, I wonder what is that that you will put in that little red box that will allow some parts of the world to leapfrog, that will allow some parts of the world to have a 21st century transportation system, and that will allow us to have, you know, 
something that makes sense for the times that we're living today.